Alright, we forward again. And this is the class you all been waiting on. Field trip to Pluto. Sorry for the wait, but we're gonna be dropping classes profusely from this point on. See, we got most students falling into the class. I'm about to get ready to twist the caps back. A lot of this information, a lot of you beans might be already up to speed on. But for those who are not, we're gonna put it out. So as we proceed to give you what you need, in the famous words of Sai Baba, let's dance. Us, me, no by the earth man as Pluto is the ninth planet from the sun being 4.6 billion miles away and its closest point is 2.7 billion miles which is about the same amount of miles as Neptune keep that in mind Pluto is also referred to as Gaga and Platoon by certain beings Pluto is a dwarf planet. The diameter of Pluto is 1,476 miles, and the circumference of Pluto is 4,494 miles, right? This is about one-sixth the size of Earth. One day on Pluto, 6.4 Earth days, meaning on Pluto, 153 hours and 36 minutes is one day. One year on Pluto is 248 Earth years. The bees on Pluto will be one years old, which is 248 Earth years, right? So it takes Pluto 248 Earth years to travel once around the sun, which breaks down to 90,560 Earth days. Right? Pluto has 76 hours, 42 minutes of daylight and 76 hours and 42 minutes of nighttime. Pluto is tilted on its axis at 57 degrees. In fact, Pluto is almost laying on its side and its atmosphere is similar to that of Earth. Having 78% nitrogen, 12% oxygen, right? And 8% of mixed of other gases such as methane, hydrogen, etc. Most of the nitrogen in this atmosphere have frozen and fell to the surface, glazing Pluto, right, with the ice, because Pluto, the surface of Pluto is negative 230 degrees. But Pluto has a center core, which is about around a thousand miles in diameter, which keeps the inside of the planet cool. There's water and oceans under the ice on Pluto, right? We're about to get into that because Pluto was once two thirds, well, it still is two thirds water. And the water have frozen on the surface. The inner world, there's oceans, right? Deeper than the Pacific Ocean. It takes light about eight minutes and 20 seconds to travel to Earth. It takes light five hours to get to Pluto, though. Pluto has five moons. One of the moons was hollowed out a long time ago. The moon called Charon was hollowed out by the Platians a long time ago. So it is an old style meteorite asteroid moon style ship, right? We're gonna get into some of that in the ancient technology tapes that's coming out, right? So there are beings in your galaxy who hollow moons out and asteroids out and turn them into ships as a disguise. Some of these bean ships have hologramic technology which can make the ship appear as a meteorite or asteroid. You see, this is old technology in the galaxy. So, as we proceed, in order to give you a better understanding of what Pluto is all about, and why it is in the situation that it is now, we must take you back a little bit over 66 billion years ago when Pluto was a moon to Saturn, about 800,000 miles off from Saturn. Pluto, in fact, is the twin planet to Titan. They were brothers. Remember, I told you that Saturn was a place where we manufactured planet, right? And Pluto is a product of this. And Titan and several other planets located around the galaxy. 66 billion years ago, at the time of Pluto being a moon to Saturn, it was covered with two thirds water, right? And like we say, it still is today. It just froze. It was home based to three races, the Meldekians and their slave race, the Tridacodites, right? And the Meldekians, as in ninjas or ninja turtles, and if you look closely at the male deckings, you can clearly see that they're a turtle without the shell. But when they're ready to go to war, they'll put on their shell though. These beings made Pluto a base, right? The Hindus from the planet Nevada came to live on Pluto and began to mix their seed with the male deckings, right? The Hindus mixing with the male deckings produced another race of beings, which was a mixed race, right? And they became known as the first platoon, as in Pluto platoon, right? As in military, right? The Beldekians 
who were already warlike, mixing their seed with the beans from Nevada, who were sorcerers and magicians and masters of illusions. The combination of the two giving birth to the leader of the first platoon, whose name was Kingu, which is spelt with a K-R-Q, meaning he who put them to sleep, which is why we never called ourselves kings. We were pharaohs, meaning light at the top or the light shining in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. And this being Kingu, who was commanded by his master, Mother Hubert, 42 billion years before the crash, to go to Tijuana and retrieve the Tablets of Destiny, the Akashic Records. And in this, Kingu did so and shut up shop on Earth called Tijuana at the time, right? Which was bigger than Saturn. Kingu became ruler over the lower half because the people feared him. He commanded a powerful military and possessed a powerful element used to cause whole cities to explode. His military carried bow and arrow with explosive tips, and he also had suicide bombers, meaning beings who would scrap bombs to themselves. Keep in mind, he tried to use his might to take over the whole planet. So he came to us with his arrogance and said he can do this, he'll do that, if we don't hand the planet over, right? the other half and we pretty much told him to go F yourself because we knew what he was after the records and a piece of ass from one of the finest women to ever to set foot on the blue rock Ishtar herself and in this rejection he became very angry he built a huge bomb using the element that came from his planet Gaga he called it his secret weapon using 4500 pounds of plutonium right and you only need about 9 or 10 pounds of this stuff to blow up a whole city. The 4,500 pounds of plutonium created 30 million tons of atomic energy to blow up Tijuana, right? Kingu was locked on the side that he blew off, which became known as the new first moon to a new reformed planet called Tiamat at the time. Kingu was put on the most wanted list, the galactic most wanted list and was hunted down and captured by our father, who is the green one, who is also called Melakai, Mikael Murdoch El. Kingu was captured and sent it to Earth in the third dimension to be incarcerated in the physical flesh. And Baba makes mention of this on page 51 in the Holy Tablet and begins to talk about the orgy of your moon. See, what happens is, is we fast forward 42 billion years, which will be 24 billion years from this time when the crash took place. Nuburu entered the solar system, right? Friday, one o'clock, right? Came into the solar system. Neptune and Uranus are like twin planets behind each other, right? One come from behind the other. As Nuburu coming to the system, we're not picking Uranus up on the charts, okay? So we pull back, and in this, we bump into a Titan, right? Snatching Pluto out of his orbit 36 billion miles, because now Pluto is 4.6 billion miles and have an Olympic orbit, which goes at its farthest peak to 4.6 billion miles, but it comes at its closest peak to the sun, 2.6 billion miles, which is the same distance as Neptune, okay? So the gravitational pull of Nubiru slang shots Pluto out 36 billion miles, causing the water on the surface to freeze over negative 230 degrees, right? Causing the beings who live to freeze. It also flipped Pluto's axis, right? From 12 degrees to 57 degrees, where it's almost laying on its side. So the, the, the ocean water flipped, causing most of the beings to die out. Some of the beings had time to escape and he went to other galaxies and other solar systems and other galaxies, right? But most of the beings died, right? And there were four races at the time of the pet fish species and a pet fish species that lived there. The four races, the Meldakians, the Dakians, the Hindus from Nirvana, and the mixed race from them beings having mixed in their seed together, which was the Kingu bean, right? Pluto is also knocked down from being three to seven to just being three, right? In the dimensions, right? Pluto was being attached to Saturn, vibrating on the same density, right? But being uh, knocked down, right, to a third dimension, a planet, right, during the crash. And the beings who were 
still survive, that survived this cataclysm on Pluto, suffered from amnesia, and were knocked down to the third dimension. You see what I'm saying? They lost their memory of their people of old. The elephant beings who came with the Hindus metamorphosized into a new creature due to the climate. Under the ice still to this day, there's advanced life of jellyfish who came to live on Pluto 200 million years ago. They are from the galaxy of the tri-solar system called Cyrus. There's also other intelligent fish life found under the ice in the oceans on Pluto. Pluto is also inhabited by an advanced crystalline life form, a race of crystals known as the gems. And keep in mind that crystals are living, breathing entities. Which is how you know when you got a real diamond or real crystal, right? Because the real diamonds have to breathe, right? And Pluto is not covered completely with ice. They have about 20% land, right? These crystals grow extremely fast and extremely large on Pluto. In fact, Pluto is termed in the galaxy the crystal form because of the crystals that grow there. These crystals communicate by way of light signals. They are telepathic also using tinkle sounds that sound like small harps or bells to communicate. There are hundreds of different colors and kinds and sizes. Most of the ones on the surface are green and grow like pine trees. They are immortal and live forever, as in diamonds are forever. They possess powerful energy and are used around the galaxy for many different things. Beans visit Pluto and fish for crystals. They also grow extremely uh, well inside of Earth. Huge diamonds and crystals, okay? So these beings live on Pluto as well today. The people who live on the moon today are descendants from Pluto, Gaga, which was called Gaga, which means crazy. Today they are called the Lunarians, literally meaning moon people. The Lunarians are humanoid beings looking similar to the Hindus. Their skin color was olive tone with straight hair. Their skin tone now, due to the many years of living on the dark side and in the center of the moon, their skin has turned a powdered, uh, pale looking blue. They grow up to seven foot tall. The Lunarans do not seem to communicate by talking, though they behave in an organized fashion, attacking, moving in unison, almost like a hive mind. Their eyelids and pupils and eyeballs are a little larger than regular humans. And they wear their hair down. And they don't take kind to Earth humans. They live in the center of the moon and come to the dark side of the moon to hunt for food. They feed on these huge spider-like insects that live in the sand on the dark side of the moon, right? They also live in tall honeycomb mud towers. The mud towers can get tall as the Eiffel Tower or the Empire State Building in New York. They are ruled by a queen who is raising her daughter to take the throne. They rule with an iron fist and are said to be direct descendants of King Gu himself, who became known as Luna, and they made him a lunar deity, right? And he wanted to turn it over to Isis, which is part of the reason why they tie Isis into the moon. We'll get into that on another class. The princess also has a brother who is agreeable, whose name is Ace because they were twins, right? His sister was a disagreeable one, who the one that the mother is to raise and to take the throne. And the brother who was agreeable, whose name is Ace, right? The whole philosophy of the Lunarans is one day they'll take back the earth, right? There's water on the moon, right? The dark side of the moon, look, the moon has no light of its own. The moon gets its light from the sun's touch. Right? Due to the explosion that took place, the sand turned into glass reflecting light. There is a side of the moon you never see, which is referred to as the dark side of the moon. Some of the craters on the moon were caused by meteorites or asteroids hitting the moon. And some of the craters being made on purpose are, are man-made because there are domes on the back of the moon, right? Which, which human beings live in because there are several, there are several beings involved with the moon also called Shikri, the Greys, Ashtar Command, the Reptilians, and the Humans. The first humans to get involved were the Nazi Germany Hitler group. They worked alongside Ashtar Command, and then the Russians got involved. Then the Americans and the French got involved next. These nations joined together to set up a base 
on the dark side of the moon called Lunar Base 12 or Moon Base 12, right? It is also referred to as the Lunar Command Station. They have found high and rich minerals on the moon and have begun mining and are mining right now here today on the moon. At this base, at this base, the aliens that they have captured from other worlds are held as prisoners. And Ashtar Command has invested technology, which is what they're calling the spirit machine, which enables them to use human avatars, Earth human avatars. These nations came together and developed a fleet of deep space ships, right? And the data, they have been going to other solar systems and other, uh, other solar systems or tri-solar systems, right? And they have been collecting data, which is kept secret by the elites. They were going places and causing trouble everywhere they went. So we who all put a seal up to keep them from getting out. Those who were already out, they were locked out and trapped outside of this solar system because it is time for judgment. We just want to bring these things to you so you can get an understanding on what's going on in your galactic, right? We love you all, and shout it out. This is the Young Elder, shout it out.